Hello and welcome to a look at understanding the R-squared coefficient with me Andy Duncan here at Finlingo.com. The R-squared coefficient is useful because it tells us whether a particular target portfolio is well diversified. If it is, it's generally a good thing to use its beta rating in something like a train-or ratio. If, however, we get an R-squared figure of less than 70%, a portfolio's beta measure of systematic risk may be too unreliable to use anywhere else. Fortunately, we hardly ever need to calculate an R-squared figure, but we do sometimes get a given in ratio analysis questions. We need to remember that above 70% a trainer ratio is good, but below 70% a sharp ratio might be better. The sharp ratio uses total risk rather than just systematic risk. To help remember the magic 70%, we'll put six target portfolio return figures onto a chart on the y-axis. On the x-axis, we've got a very well diversified benchmark market index with a systematic beta of 1. What we need to know is how much the target's movement is driven by the benchmark. The closer they move together, the better the target portfolio is diversified. So let's get some points in. If the benchmark is minus 3%, the target gets back minus 4%. If the benchmark is minus 2%, the target return is minus 1. If the benchmark is minus 1, the target's minus 2. For an x of 1, we get a y of 2. For an x of 2, we get a y of 1. And for the benchmark return of 3%, the target returns 4%. The next thing we need to put in is a line of best fit, and we can use something like a least squares method to do this. The line of best fit predicts what each y value should be given any particular market value and we're going to label this predicted number y star. Next up we figure out what the standard error is between each actual y value and each predicted y value. Then we square these values. Then we add them all up into a big fat sum. As a measure of dispersion we now figure out the average y value. We sum up every element of the y column then divide by 6 the number of the points. In this case the actual y figures all cancel out so the average becomes 0. We then plot every x value against this y average to generate another line which I'll put onto the chart. Next up we figure out the difference between every actual y value and this average y value. We then square those figures then add them up into another funky sum. And now the magic gets real. To get r squared we just divide the sum of the standard errors by the sum of the average differences then we take this division away from 1. You can see the r squared value comes to about 87%. This means the portfolio is well diversified, it's greater than 70%. So what does it mean in terms of the chart? It means the benchmark is significantly driving the target. And because we know the market's well diversified we're pretty sure the target is 2. So let's try to get a perfect R-square figure of 100%. To do that it's easy just to make all the target portfolio numbers equal the benchmark numbers. Before I do that though I'll plot a perfect matching line. Now let's make all the points the same. You can see I've now got an R-squared figure of exactly 100%. But I can get to that by even doubling the target against the benchmark. R-squared still remains 100. Or I can set the target to always give us two more than the benchmark. Again, R squared's still 100. Remember, we're looking for extremely strong correlation, not just perfect matching figures. So let's get back to the original position. Now I'll try to get an R squared figure of less than 70%. I'm going to gradually make all the actual points less and less like the predicted values on the line. Now you can see that though the line of best fit is trying real hard, it's not predicting well anymore. And now we've got an R-squared figure of less than 70%. It's not well diversified. So given a choice between a sharp ratio or a train or ratio, we should use the sharp ratio. Head on over now to finlinger.com to get an infinite number of questions on how to calculate sharp ratio and train or ratios, along with hundreds of other CFA-style questions. Finlingo. Speak finance fluently.